Hello everybody, it's Gary Stuckey with Real Music. Hope you're doing okay wherever you are today. And I hope you're ready for another podcast episode full of fun and news you didn't know, things like that. <laughs> but today, I've got the drummer for McBride and the Ride. Billy Thomas is here talking about their brand new EP they got. It's a live EP. Uh, it's coming out in October. Uh, but they got some uh, singles out right now. Uh, Amarillo Sky... And then they just released the song No More Crying from the movie Eight Seconds. Remember that? They did their live version now. And that's really cool to hear from those guys. Uh, they're celebrating 35 years together in the song No More Crying. 30 years. And uh, a lot of fun uh, and exciting things to talk about today. And uh, we're going to do it right now. So here we go. Here he is. Here's Billy Thomas. Okay, brand new EP coming out in October. Yes. Live, a live EP, right? Can you talk about that? I would love to. We are, um, for those of us, or for those people who don't know that much about us, we were a group in the 90s. And most of the material, in fact, all of the material that's on this live EP was recorded before on studio albums. And so when we went out a few months ago, well, actually, way back, uh, and recorded this at Ray Herndon's uh, club out in Scottsdale, Arizona. We did it. Uh, we did a live version of, we did two nights worth of, of recording and captured these songs. And they, we, we decided, let's go back and see, see what they sound like. Let's see. And we, we got excited about it. We thought, we need to share this. Let's see, let everybody know what we do live because each of the three of us, there's actually four people on stage. We have a terrific uh, session player, steel guitar player named Bruce Bouton who's with us. But the three of us, Ray Herndon plays guitar and sings. Terry McBride plays bass, sings, and I play drums and sing. So the nucleus is there. We all, we're all kind of like double threats, each of us, you know? And so, we recorded these songs and, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's taken off. We did a, a song. We, the first one we released was Amarillo Sky. And that was from 2000, back in 2001. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, re we did that and it, it didn't do what it was supposed to. So this time around, we gave it another shot live. And now this second one, the brand new one is no more crying. And this is off the, uh, eight seconds soundtrack, which was a movie, a rodeo movie. And, uh, and we love the way it sounded live. So right. we're doing this and now we'll have uh, three more in the can to come out and then a live EP, which is due out, I believe October 18th. And then we'll, we'll uh, give awesome. everyone the whole eight, the EP will come out then. And we're actually playing a gig awesome. here in, in Nashville where I live. We're playing a, where Terry and I live. Um, downtown at uh, Eric Church's place, and we're gonna we're gonna debut the EP at that point, along with some other stuff. We're gonna do like a, a live show. So awesome, awesome, yeah, man. And uh, celebrating uh, thirty five years of of the band, right? So absolutely, in thirty years of in thirty years yeah. of the song, uh, in, no more yeah. crying from the movie. Uh, absolutely, so cool. Thirty years old. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Yeah. It's hard to uh, believe time, time flies, Gary, you know, it's yeah. just like, you just go, what, how can this happen? But the fact that the songs still um, are strong, in our opinion, the songs are really strong and we deliver them strong. There's no reason not to get out there and share them with everybody. And we got so many, we get so much love, internet love that we, we, we try and get to whomever we can with, it. you know, the music business has changed, but there's right. still fans out there who still love the nineties and still love our harmonies and the stamp we made, you know, so we're carrying sure. on. Sure. I love the nineties and I love the harmony. In fact, harmonies, that's one of my favorite things about music and y'all do such a great job. And, uh, you know, I've always, like I said, loved y'all. And I'm, I'm sure you've had a lot of fans say we played your, your, your song at our wedding or we, you know, dance to the songs you know and, and yes. you know 
But harmonies, though, to me, just add a special touch. And it's not easy. It's not easy being a drummer that sings. And, and harmonizing <laughs> is not easy either, right? So how well, did y'all get that special bend together, you know, when you're harmonizing like that? Well, it's kind of, it happened naturally, but we didn't know anything about the harmony potential of the band. We knew all three of us sang. And so our right. producer uh, early on, the guy that brought us together, a guy named Tony Brown, brought us together and knew us each from different paths out there in country rock music business, you know? And so we were on his radar and he said, I want to try and let's see, I want to try an experiment. I want to put people together. And so we all got in a room and we had learned these songs. Terry had, had sent him a uh, cassette. Yes. Back there. Cassettes mm -hmm. uh, in 1995. Yeah, uh, and excuse me, not in 1995. He had sent him. He had sent him five a five song cassette, and uh, it was great. It was it was just very different to me what I heard. So we all three got in and we learned this material and we brought it all to this rehearsal hall here in Nashville. And after we had gotten the music fairly tight, we put our harmonies. We just kind of said, okay, kind of. We knew Terry was singing lead because he had written the songs and sang lead on them. But it was kind of this natural thing. Ray's got more of a baritone voice, and I have more of a tenor voice. I sing high. So anyways, it was a natural fit. But we we stepped back and went, wow, this is pretty cool. We are The blend of what we have is natural and adds even more to to those songs at the time. And then Tony came in and heard it. And then he brought more people in from MCA and they got excited. And it was like, it went gangbusters like wildfire, you know? So it was an excellent, right. just an excellent thing. And, it, awesome. and to me, I, I pride myself in harmonies and I know singing with Terry and Ray, we can get back to be, get back together now on stage. And it's like riding a bicycle again. You get back in, you listen to each other and then you back off and blend or you, we have an acapella song that we do pretty much. Ray plays a little acoustic guitar called Just One Night. And we do that live. And it's, man, it's, it's the way we end our show. It's so beautiful and powerful at the same time. So, and I, wouldn't, I would not say that it's sibling harmony by any means. You know, there are three distinct colors, but those colors all work. So there's your answer in a long-winded answer. But... <laughs> It really does work. I mean, you know, and I, I was listening to uh, Sacred Ground the other day, number two song. Uh, yes. A song like that, though, uh, when when you're doing that song live and you're you're remembering those times and you're yes. still together singing that song. But that was a special time back then to have a, a hit song like that and everybody's going, these guys are awesome. Oh, Can you yeah. go back and remember those days and how exciting that was? Well, I know we had Sacred Ground was our second album. And so we had momentum at that time, right. but but we hadn't had a number one. We had uh, Can I Count on You, which got us on the charts and got people following us. And if you remember CMT, CMT was real uh, influential back then. And we had this, this uh, uh, Can I Count on You got into some pretty heavy rotation and basically broke us on there and so radio started taking a closer look at us and then by the time we got to sacred ground we knew the song was strong but we had no idea it would speak to so many people it was another one of those story songs and everybody could relate to it so <laughs> unfortunately we cut the song we 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 put it out as a single and unfortunately we got stuck behind achy breaky heart it was at number one. And so we had to sit for a few weeks and be patient for Billy Ray Cyrus to move on. You know what I'm saying? So, but we moved up and we got uh, a number one out of that. So then, and, and I just oh, remember, awesome. I remember us doing a lot of, a lot of um, press. And back then you all, you did it from pay phones, you know, or a hotel lobby phone or a hotel room, you know, and we'd all get together around a, something and try and harmonize for people who, who wanted to hear that, you know, just trying to get our voice heard collectively. Right. 
you know? So it was very cool. And it was a, it was a one, right. I mean, I remember us all pulling over and, and, uh, and listening to the song and then cheering and, you know, being high. It was a high like no other, you know, for a band. Because you, you work for that stuff. And that was basically one of our pinnacles, you know, so. Sure, sure. And, uh, you know, during that time, I know the band kind of went, people went separate ways. And I think you got yeah. back together a few years yeah. later and then you yep. broke up again. So what was that? I know you did other things, but, you know, what was it that got you back together this time? And you said, hey, we want to do this again. Well, when I was approached by Ray, Ray gave me a call and said that that he had gone out, that Terry had gone out. And uh, there's a museum out in Phoenix called the MIM, I think. Music Instrument Museum, I believe, in Phoenix. And Terry came out to do a performance out there. And Ray came to the show. And so Terry invited him up to sing Sacred Ground. And they sang that song together. And he said it was just like magic. He was telling me over the phone. He said, you know, let's give this a try. Let's give it a shot. Let's go have some fun. You know, we don't have to be, this is not climbing to the top of the hill. This is about revisiting and having some fun out on the road and, and playing music that we loved, that we loved back then. Let's do it again. And so it sounded good to me. And I said, let's give it a shot, you know? So uh, that's, that's what that was about. Yes, we did take some time off. Uh, and in 2001, I guess is what it would have been. We put an album out on dual tone called Amarillo Sky. And radio was just not ready for us. It was going through some changes at the time. And, you know, the Internet had crept in, all technology, all this stuff. And um, so we we stopped. And so this was uh, 20, I guess it was 20, 2020, maybe, when Ray gave me a call. And so we went out and we did a, a couple, uh, we did a couple gigs and then covid so everything sort of shut back down, yeah. but we stayed in touch. We kept going. And then we started this building process and we've been building ever since really once we get going again, um, we're, we're all into trying to, to get it out to the fans as best we can, whether it's live or whether it's via internet or via CD or whatever it is anymore, EP. <laughs> so right, right. whatever it takes. Yeah. Um, that's awesome. And uh, in addition to uh, McBride and the Ride and having fun with those guys, I know you're kind of, you play with another band called the Time Jumpers, yes, and uh, yeah, I, and you play with Vince Gill, who who plays a part in that. How did yeah, you get well, involved in that? That's a cool project. That's that it. It was uh, it was an invite um, that well, I, I wasn't quite ready for it because I had seen the band and I knew the caliber of musicianship and they were in a different genre of music than I, I had ever tried to play before as a drummer. I can I really like to rock. I like to play uh, a lot of different styles. And this was a style I wasn't familiar with. I had to go back and teach myself how to play brushes because all of the music, uh, if you see us live or hear our records, it is, it's a throwback to Bob Wills, but it's more a little more jazzy and softer, not as raucous as Bob Wills was. And um, we a lot of the material is from his songbook, but there's some new stuff. And uh, people write some new stuff that, that sounds old. You know, it sounds kind of like that. So it's a cool band, and it makes me play differently and makes me think differently about when I sit down on stage with that band every Monday night, I have to kind of turn my hat a little bit differently because it's an experience, a total different experience. And I like that. I like the variety of it. So it's kind of like doing session work. When you do session right. work, you, you meet somebody new, they come in and they've got a different painting, a different palette of what their music they're trying to portray. And it may be a combination of people that came before them. And you just kind of sit back and go, what can I do to help? then you you add that or you, you you give that suggestion and then they say 
no, that's not quite the way I wanted it. They say, yes, let's give that a shot. And then everybody kind of goes down the road, you know, with it. Right. So um, I hope that I didn't drift off too far from well, the original question for you. But but uh, the time jumpers are certainly no, the- dear to my heart. I've been there a long time. And uh, it's a different it's a different kind of experience for me. So. And it, and it sounds like it's a lot of fun. I mean, you've got a lot of different players and musicians and singers mixed Absolutely. in together and do, doing different songs. Absolutely. So cool. we, um, actually, actually, Vince is not there anymore. Vince, he got an offer from this other band called the Eagles. And so he just said, who are they? Who, who are these yeah, who, yeah, and we said, what? You're going to leave us it. on Monday night for the Eagles? Come on. <laughs> Oh, come so, on. Don't turn this guy. You're right, right. <laughs> so so uh he and a, a guy named Paul Franklin, uh, a famous steel player, they left at the same time. There, actually a group of people left. And then there's a new regime. Uh we have three new people, uh actually four in the band now. Uh Justin Branham, Chris Walters, uh, Wendy Moten, and Eddie Dunlap on Steel. And they're all they're all in their own right. They're virtuoso people, you know. Uh, Wendy is probably the most celebrated of of all of us in the band at the moment. She was a runner up on The Voice a couple of years back, and she's a, an incredibly talented singer. So she's a great voice for that kind of band. She can sing pretty much any songbook kind of, and uh, and so she's a <laughs> and she grew up in Memphis, so she's. Got she claimed she had one foot uh watch or one eye watching hee haw and the other eye uh watching Soul Train. <laughs> you know? So good combination. That great? That's a good combination. Yeah, it is. I should have said ears, <laughs> not oh. one eye. That's not a very pretty well, picture, well, is it? For so <laughs> that's yeah, well, you know, if you're a cyclops, I don't know. I yeah, but, there uh, you go. Go go back in time, uh Going back in time, I know you. Speaking of time, I know you got to go pretty quick. But uh, yeah, uh, you I'm started good. out. Uh, Emmy Lou Harris. You started off. Uh, you played with Emmy Lou Harris, a fellow yes, Al- Alabamian. I'm from Alabama. Yes. But, so uh, and Mac Davis, I was reading. Uh, yes. some cool people to jam with. Some great songs. That that experience had to uh, make you smile. Can you talk a oh, little my. bit about that? Well. You know, Gary, the the longer you're around and you don't go away, the more opportunities that come your way and people know about you and trust you. With Mac Davis, I had been playing with, with Ricky Nelson and, and the Stone Canyon Band for a couple of years. And he, I had some, some friends who were kind enough to get me an audition with him. And so I got into his band and I played mainly live with him. I did very little recording with Mac. So, but I got to meet Rick Hall. I knew I knew him, and uh, um, and Mac was such a such an the ultimate entertainer, and such a natural talent at songwriting. You had no idea what was coming through him when you when you played those songs. I just remember thinking these are different. These are different than the songs that that I listened to. You know. This was back in the set late 70s. No, actually 80, 80 through 86. I played with him. And he was playing mainly casinos and that kind of thing in, in Vegas and Tahoe and Reno out west. And uh, but he made he made a, a, a big songwriting impression on me. And I loved it. I loved it. It 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 was it. and then when I moved, it helped, it helped me. I was able to bring that with me to Nashville. And when I met a couple people that I knew here, um, that song sensibility helped me. And I, and I got the opportunity to play with Emmy Lou on, on uh, her blue album that she put out. And uh, it was killer. I met all these uh, amazing musicians on that. And then I was asked to, to go tour with her. And I went and toured with her for about, a year and a half or so, something like that. And we did a, a whole bunch of touring together. And she was like, I don't mean to say it, she was like my big sister, my older sister. 
when she found out I was from Los Angeles and kind of newly moved to town, she said, well, what country music have you listened to? And I said, well, um, I'm going to be shoot up, shoot straight with you here. I mean, I, I've, I've listened to, to some Ricky Skaggs. I've listened to Merle Haggard. And li I've heard uh, Vince Gill uh, a little bit. And obviously, I've, I've heard this album's worth of your material right now, you know. But she said, you listen to Merle Haggard? And I said, yeah, I listen. I bought a couple singles. And, I, and she goes, well, you ought to check out this guy named Lefty Frizzell. And I went, okay, I'll check out Lefty Frizzell. And then she said, who do you listen to for your harmonies? And I said, well, I used to listen. I, I remember growing up and listening to the Everly Brothers. She said, well, there were people before them that came named the Leuven Brothers, and you need to check out the Leuvens. And it was that kind of love yeah. for country music enough to gently put her arm around me and go, hey, check this out. These are the roots of where this came for me, and I want to share them with you. It was a beautiful experience. It was like, and Vince was the same way. Vince was so naturally wonderful, and I stepped into something that that I was, I had to, I wanted to learn the soul of country music when I learned here, or when I moved here, and so it 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 uh, it meant a lot. And I moved up, I moved up the ladder, my ladder, very quickly. So it was a gift. <laughs> Well, you you sure caught on pretty quick. Uh, oh, thank you. <laughs> and coming into these bands, and play. well, uh, you do a you great may... job. Uh, and yeah, go ahead. No, I'm just going to say you may have some of these are kind of long winded, and I'll I'll be I'll admit I I drift a little bit, but there's you're talking about a lot of years here, and when you talk about those artists, they were both really important to me, like they all are. You know what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. and I see him as well, gifts, awesome. as as musical uh, gifts to me. You know, you know you're, sure, sure, sure. Um, well, tell me about the shows coming up uh, on uh, either bank. You know the uh, you know McBride and the Ride. What you got? Is there going to be another album in the future? Like recording some more music? Is something like that going to happen? I, I don't know that the, the, like I said, the technology has, has changed so much. It's like we can, we release singles and they're part of a package, but nobody has a CD player. Or they are not very many people have CD players anymore. Too. I, do. I do too. <laughs> I do too. But I'm just saying as, as far as things go there, there's the streaming now is, is the way that, yeah. that people get their stuff. And so I would like to say we are going to come up with another album uh, here soon. But right now we're, we're still excited about this live project because it's the first time we've heard ourselves live and, uh, you know, really well and went back and, and made it, scoped it out and made it sound really good, you know? So, and uh, yeah. 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 So, and No More Crying is just, to me, it's electric. I mean, it is just... It's uh, it'll make you tap your foot and want to dance and get out there. You know what I'm saying? And think about that movie and how cool that movie was at that time. Right. So. Yeah. Great movie. Great times. Mm -hmm. um, right. And then uh, after all these years, like you said, you, and you're, it's like you're reliving that you're, you're playing the music in the live experience. You know, if, if somebody hasn't made it to your show, they listen to the live music and they go, I got to go check these guys out because this is on fire. Exactly. <laughs> this this right. is kind of like a sample of what y'all do live. It's a, that's exactly right. And I, I feel like with shows like uh, television shows, I'm saying like Saturday night live or like, well, I'm going way back. Ed mm -hmm. Sullivan used to be America's got talent in their own way. Right. The voice these reality there shows are, are 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 live music in your face. Even the Opry, when it's recorded, when it's recorded live, um, especially with video, it separates a lot of people who are fixing stuff post yeah. anymore. So you've got to you've got to have your stuff together to play live, 
and to be able to be confident enough to put it out there. So I, I would say, yeah, I, that's, that's an true. invitation. That's, that I, proves where you are. I'm sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, well, that proves where you are as an artist as far as, you know, you find out who's real and who's not real, but to play live, to record live, and I know you could fix live yes. Uh, yes, you CDs can. and music and out, yeah. but to hear that, but you can, I, part of part of live is messing up. Yes, right? it part is. Part of live is yes. getting a bad note every now and then. It's right. That's it, part of the whole fun and the experience, right? Yeah, there are there are flaws that happen. You know, they're gonna happen, especially when you're when you're singing and playing drums. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and everybody, Terry's playing bass and singing leads <laughs> all the time. Ray's playing uh, guitar and singing harmony the whole time. You know, we're all trying to cover as many bases as we can, and then we've got. This is a steel player who's wonderful, who plays a lot of leads as well. And uh, he's a terrific musician as well. And so when we bring that and we come and you see us live on stage, that's what you're going to get. There's nothing more than that. There's four guys on stage, kind of like Buck Owens and the Buckaroos or the Beatles or whatever. I, you know, uh, I'm just saying sure. it, it's a live experience. So. And I, I, I don't mean right. to cut this short. I've got well, something else awesome. coming up, Gary. I, I appreciate it. Well, well, that's fine. Well, I thank you for talking about this today, and uh, all the best to you. Looking forward to hearing more and the live stuff, and and uh, they can you. check out the website for more information. Right? Yeah, yeah. And I hope that's not rude to me. I, I don't mean to do that. We got a late start. That's all. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're all good. All good. All right. I totally understand. All right. Well, thank you so much, it's... and I hope I'll sit out there somewhere and talk to you again soon, okay? All right, Gary. Thank you. Good to meet you. Hope to see you. Oh, good to meet you. Bye. All right. Bye. And there you have him, Billy Thomas, McBride and the Ride. What a guy. Great conversation. Check out their new EP when it comes out. Maybe you can see him somewhere out there on the road and... uh Check out the band, the Time Jumpers. That's a cool band. And check out their website for more information. And until next time, everybody, always remember this. Keep the music real.